Hello everybody, today is Wednesday, which means I have another top five Wednesday video for you all. September 28th means gateway books to your favorite genre. So for this I picked fantasy, specifically more of a high fantasy, new world type of situation. So we're going to get to the first book, which is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is the Remnant Chronicles. This is her debut novel, and this takes place where a girl named Leah is betrothed to a prince in the other kingdom of Dalbrook, and she is from the kingdom Morrigan. This is supposed to create an alliance and strengthen both kingdoms. However, she does not want to get married, so she ends up running away with her handmaiden, on the day of her wedding, and obviously this puts both kingdoms in upheaval, and the prince decides to go after her and find her and confront her, and also the third kingdom, Venda, sends an assassin to go and kill her. So you're reading this story and trying to figure out who is a prince, who is an assassin, and will Leah be alright? Next we have The Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. This takes place in a kingdom called Ixia, where a girl named Yelena is given this ultimatum. She can either be the poison taste tester to the commander of this kingdom, or be killed because she is on trial for murder. This kingdom is very interesting. It's not quite a monarchy, which distracted me a little bit. It is a very heavily military society where you also have magical beings that are being hunted in this kingdom and Yelena actually finds out that she has these magical powers and she cannot control them which makes her position in this kingdom very very dicey. Next we have The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This takes place in a very interesting society where there are red bloods and silver bloods. The silver bloods all have magical powers. They can be some type of elemental where they can control water or earth or fire. They are the rulers and the higher class society in this kingdom. Now the red bloods are basic humans. They have no powers and they are the workers and servants in this society. And then we have a girl named Mare who happens to have powers even though she's a red blood. And in order to cover up this mystery because reds are not supposed to have powers, the king concocts a great plan to hide this by masquerading her as a lost silver blood princess and betrothes her to one of his sons. Things obviously get really dicey in this story. It is a big story about betrayal and who you trust, as well as having Mare try to control these newfound abilities that she has never been aware of before. Next we have Leviathan by Scott Westerfeld. This takes place in an alternate reality of the 1900 era right before World War I. We have Prince Alexander who is the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne on the night that his parents get assassinated. Now a lot of you who know history know that that is a big spark of World War I. But there was a lot of other forces ahead and it also follows a girl named Darren who masquerades herself as a boy to join the British army. Now both main characters are from different backgrounds. The British Empire is highly in evolutionary and genetics, so they create their airships with the use of bioengineering so that they are living, breathing, massive creatures. And then there is Alexander's community where they are very steampunk era of steam where they have mechanics and trains and all of that stuff. So it was very entertaining and I absolutely loved the mechanics of this clash between bioengineering and steam. The last book I have is The Fairy Guardian by Rachel Morgan. This is a fantastic 
fairy mystical creature story where you have fairy guardians that protect the human world from bad mystical creatures. And our main character is a girl named Violet who is in her last year of guardian training. She is sent out on an assignment to protect a boy named Nate from being killed by one of these rogue fairy creatures. Let's just say Fae are supposed to be hidden from the eyes of humans, but Nate sees her and in all of this confusion, he winds up in the Creepy Hollow, which is where the Fae live. And Violet tries to send him back to home, but there's a lot of shenanigans that happen and there's also a plot to disrupt this guardian-human balance. So a lot of things happen and I absolutely adored this book. So those are the five books that really emphasize the fantasy genre of mystical societies and fantasy places. I absolutely loved all of these books. And I'd love for you to tell me what your favorite gateway fantasy book is. Please let me know in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Goodbye!